Richard, Mrs. Silo. Oh, wait, listen, there's Mrs. Silo right now. I declare, my goodness, not so much noise. When is she coming, Mrs. Silo? Yes, Mrs. Silo, when will she be here? Are all the children here? Yes, ma'am. Everyone from school is here. Everyone except my gold. Oh, he couldn't come, huh? He's just a sore head. Joe had to give him a good licking at school today so he wouldn't tell Annie about the surprise party. Oh, I declare to goodness. Well, it served him right. Hey, when is she coming, Mrs. Silo? Well, Joe promised to have her here by 20 minutes to 4. <gasps> it's almost 20 to 4 now. Yes, indeedy, I know it is. Hey, Tipper Jimmy, take a look out the window and see if you can see Joe and Annie coming. Okay. Now you children go and hide in the barn, and when Annie and Joe come in, you run out and holler surprise. All right, Mrs. Silo. Okay. Hey, get ready, everybody. Here they come. Get into the covers. Hide. I declare to goodness, hide, everyone, hide. Hurry up. Yes, indeed, get in, you children. <laughs> it looks like we're all ready, Ma. <laughs> oh, Pa, that tablecloth over there, pull it straight. All the presents are hidden there. She'll see them when she comes in. Sure, Ma, sure. Quick, quick. I'll oh, get it, Ma. anything. Oh, my goodness. Whose hat is that over there on the windowsill? Throw it in the bedroom, Pa. I'll get it, Ma. Oh, Annie's got sharp eyes. She'd notice if anything was wrong. Don't worry, I'll get it. Oh, boy, there. Yeah, I think everything's all right now. There she's coming now. Gosh, Annie, I'm sorry I couldn't find it. I bet there never was a beaver there. Oh, sure there was, Annie. Peter and Paul told me they saw him building the dam. But when we got over there, we couldn't find it. What's the matter with you, young'uns? I was going to show Annie a place where a beaver was building his house, but when we got over there, we couldn't find it. Mrs. Silo? What's the matter, Annie? And even Mrs. What's the matter with you, Mrs. Silo? Me? Well, there's nothing wrong with me. Surprise! Happy birthday! such a swell present. Wow. Sure is. Hey, Happy kids, wasn't that a surprise birthday party for Annie? And did you ever see such a keen birthday present as that beautiful ring that she got from Daddy Warbucks? Well, that's all from now, but join us next week at 545 for the adventures of Little Orphan Annie. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, we love you. Tomorrow, you're only a day. Superman. Now this show was sponsored by Kellogg's Pep Cereal 
And it was also the very first action piece that fully utilized sound effects uh, that took audiences on an audio adventure. Superman, disguised as Clark Kent, mild matter reporter for the great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle with choose justice and the American way. This looks like a job for Superman, and we now present to you the adventures of Superman in the Silver Clipper, epi Silver Clipper episode from the 1940s. Will our cast and crew join us for the Silver Clipper? All aboard! Yeah, all aboard! The Silver Clipper taking off! The Silver Clipper taking off! The cast and crew we have for you today is our announcer. That shall be me for now. We have Florence playing the second helper as well as helper. Their narrator and sound effects engineer shall be Joanna. Superman shall be played by Dent Dawn. The Chief shall be played by Morris. Harry White shall be, and the new editor is played by Evelyn. Sandra will be playing Kino. Florence, the police help officer and helper. And we have two bad guys, both played by Wolf playing Wolf, and both played by Ruth, that is Wolf and Masters. And now we present Superman. Dogs Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> More powerful than a locomotive. <laughs> Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. <laughs> Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now for Superman. Events on the main line of the West Coast Railroad are rapidly reaching a climax. Speeding west out of Denver is the crack steamliner, the Silver Clipper, which roars up the slope of the Rockies, headed for the San Joaquin Pass. Disaster! Sudden and unseen lies waiting for it in Schooner Cannon Lake. While Superman wings his way through space, searching desperately for the nearest mountain town, at last he finds it. He drops down from the sky to meet the local chief of police in his character of Clark Kent, the local news reporter. Now, listen. Well, you talk good. I'll say that for you, Kent. Well, if you don't believe me, telephone my paper and ask for verification. Well, or call the defend D division superintendent on the West Coast Railroad in Denver. Well, a silver clipper is a West Coast train, isn't it? Well, it is now, but it won't be for long. I'm telling you if something isn't done in a hurry. Okay, but how are you going to prove it? Suppose I get up there in the San Joaquin and pull in a couple of guys. How am I going to prove anything? I'll tend to that. You know the Circle Y Ranch? Sure. A couple of injured trainmen crawled in there a while ago. They were on that missing locomotive and tender. You don't mean it. I certainly do mean it. If you get those two men I told you about, the one who calls himself the Wolf and his henchman Kino, the mystery's solved. Say, you're beginning to make sense, young man. By gollies, I'll do it. Get What's your plan? Get a fast car. Head for the crossing at San Joaquin. You know the old school in Canyon Junction? Sure, I reckon I can find it even in the dark. All right, get up there and ride. If we don't catch them red-handed, it's no good. That's what I'm waiting for. Okay, Kent. Say, this is your name, ain't it? Hey, hey, where are you going? I want to call my paper and have them hold the presses for a big break. I'll pay for the call. <laughs> Operator, I want the per I want Perry White, managing editor of the Day Planet. Yes, rush it, please. I'll hold the phone. Hey, hello, White speaking. Mr. White, this is Clark Kent. Kent. Good Lord, man, I thought you were dead. Where have you been all day? Tied up in a cellar, but I broke out. Listen, Mr. White, how long before you're gonna press? Now, wait a minute, I'm going to press right now. Well, hold it, will you? Stop the press. Gotta be a good one, Kent. Well, don't worry, it will be. The big break on the Western Railroad story. You kidding? You know the warnings on the Silver Clipper? It's coming off tonight. Where are you now? I'm in a little police station in a small town on the main line. Well, what's going to happen? I don't know, Mr. White, but I know this much. It won't be long. I've got to go now. Will you hold the press? Okay, Kent. You won't regret it, Mr. White. I'll call you the minute I have something. Hey, wait, Kent. What's this about a mysterious flying figure? Something called a Superman. Oh, forget it, Mr. White. Oh, somebody's pipe dream, huh? There's been a lot of talk. 
Well, forget it. I'm in a position to know. So long. Good luck, Kent. I'll be waiting.